Good evening, everybody. Very, very warm welcome to a session that will be electrifying with Oyendula Dutt as moderator, Anjana Basu as our guest speaker, and Anandojit Goshami, whose author, whose book Lucy and Artificial Intelligence will be discussed in the next 35 to 40 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, I take great pleasure in speaking a little bit about all three of them. I start with Oyendula, who we are delighted to have with us. And um, she is uh, the founder of Open Doors. She is also a renowned arts and events curator and presenter, having worked with luminaries and celebrities in India and overseas. She's also a freelance writer and a columnist for leading publications and dailies. Thank you so much, Oidila, for being with us today. Thank you. Um, yeah. One second. Anjana Basu, born in Allahabad, schooled for a time in the United Kingdom. She has to date published nine novels and two books of poetry. She began writing for children in 2010 when Roli brought out Chinku and the Wolf Boy. Her Jim Corbett series for Terry, dealing with big cat conservation for children, began in 2013 with In the Shadow of the Leaves, Leopard in the Laboratory in 2016, 18 Tides and a Tiger published in June 2017 and Hide and Seek Tiger, also published in June 2019. Conspiracy of Ants was brought out, incidentally, by Ridomania. Thank you, Anjanadi. Thank you for being with us. My uh, pleasure. Have, thank you. Uh, I'm very happy to have Anandajit Goswami with us today. He has a PhD in Energy Economics and Policy from Terry School of Advanced Studies and Master's in International Trade and Economics from Jawaharlal Nehru University, where he was also a Ford Foundation Scholar, which was earned through a merit-based entrance and relative grade-based semester system. In the past, he has also worked with Terry, which is the Energy and Resources Institute, and Terry School of Advanced Studies, which is known as Terry SAS, SAS. Over here, he taught several courses like art and sustainability, economics of sustainability, mathematics for sustainability for eight years. Thank you, Anandajit. We look forward to a very riveting discussion. Over to you, Indrila. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank so you, much. Mona. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mona. And uh, before we start, I'm just going to say that Anjana and I have a couple more things in common. We both went to Loretto House, and we both have an advertising background. She's still in advertising. But welcome, Anandajit and Anjana. Uh, Anandajit, first, let me hold up the book. This is the book that mm. we're talking about. Lucy meets yep. artificial intelligence. intelligence. So, Anandajit, there are so many issues in this book. Uh, there's our responsibility towards our future, critical environmental issues. There is uh, sustainable development, uh, artificial intelligence, both the man-made kind and the extraterrestrial kind. And of course, Lucy stands for, I'm going to read this from the book, uh, love, understanding, uh, creation, and youthfulness. So. Uh, before we get into other questions, why don't we start uh, with you, Anandajit, outlining what were the main concerns when you wrote this book? Your main concerns. Why did you write this book? Uh, well, uh, thank you, Indriladi. Uh, thank you, Anjanadi. Uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I think uh, the instead of concern, I will like to use the word confusions, uh, because I think uh, I am a man or a fluid person 
who is always mm. uh, under a state of confusion and uh, because of my because of my 19 to 20 years of career in uh, sustainability science uh, mm. there there was a lot of uh, confusion which had uh, accumulated within me and uh, sustainability we all know these days is uh, connected to economic social governance political uh, i mean these are very superficially being talked about many times it has taken me at least 30 32 years of journey to understand so i was i think i was almost going to erupt my nerves were going to erupt to say something and uh, there was no limitation of those eruptions which were happening and i had to say something uh, i should i should say that i actually didn't plan a lot the ri- the write ups the writings just came and trust me i was always very uh, uh, diffident uh, and there were many rejections when i wrote this uh but i had to write because there was no other way it, it uh, this entire this la, uh, uh, lucy is actually the second in the journey of lucy series is has mm. been a cathartical journey cathartical journey so lucy to me is my psychological counselor so i will just go and talk to her and i think those talking points is what you have uh, you have uh, read or seen because uh, it is more of my visual images in my mind Uh, so i will say those confusions are there mm. in different domains of social economic and governance domains which yeah. confuses me every day uh, yeah. it's just a platform where it has come out nothing else nothing more than that okay okay uh, anand ji if you've been associated with terry the energy and research institute and with the terry school for advanced studies how has this impacted on your book yeah i i i yeah i i think i will uh, sorry oindula the you are saying something more no, you are saying I'm, something else okay. how important is it how is it impo- impacted yeah uh, it definitely definitely has an impact i think uh, uh, what uh, lucy has uh, is an outcome of not only a terry terry school of advanced studies but it is an outcome of my being born and brought up in a very uh, in a very frugal lifestyle in uh, kolkata uh my bachelor's uh, in kolkata then coming out of kolkata uh, in delhi going abroad staying in africa moving all across the world uh, mm. working in U- un united nations economic right. commission for yeah. africa where i where i yeah. where i saw different cultures of africa uh, uh, very closely uh, where i will speak with many people in africa so many friends across the different parts of the world mm. uh mm-hmm. i mean working in uh, un actually mo- terry absolutely made an impact because i got a huge exposure uh, at various platforms where where i mm-hmm. had to interact and understand about different cultures of the world and mm-hmm. uh, that really has made an impact uh, i think yeah. that cultural exposure i owe a lot uh, because okay. i think many times many times we are doing uh, the mundane stuff of modeling but i mm-hmm. n- always knew that there are many things the the modeling itself is also binding me or the my policy making language or mm-hmm. my publication mm-hmm. language or my teaching language many times is binding me somewhere so i think that yeah. restlessness the restlessness accumulated and the result of that restlessness is what uh, you find in uh, lucy meets artificial intelligence okay uh, l- uh, let me ask anjana a question here uh you to have a terry connect through your big cats conservation yep. uh, series but leopard in the laboratory 18 tigers mm. and a tiger etc etc what drew you to conservation mm. whether it's animals the environment what was the attraction in it for you what was the catalyst uh, very frankly it started with a ghost story it started with jim corbett's ghost and from there yes. somehow or the other i mean okay the logic was the jim corbett's ghost would probably rescue me. and from that start a whole bunch yeah. of books materialized yeah and it was a fit with terry because they do all these conservation things so i think we work together pretty well and so that's why it and it's through terry that i actually met ananjit along okay. the way okay yeah 
Okay, so um, just like Anjana, uh, your books have a strong message for children. Uh, I wanted to ask Anandaji, who is your primary target audience, in especially for a book like Lucy Meets Artificial Intelligence? Who and why? You know, when when I wrote when I wrote this, I mean the politics of writing this. Definitely, yeah. I had an audience in mind. But once I had uh, completed the entire journey and the write up, yeah. when I uh, relook back to my journey, I really don't know the what is a children's science fiction. The answer I don't have that answer. So I'm in that stage right now, because okay. whatever whatever you think about when you think about the word children, I mm. mean, uh, do we limit the children by an age only? Do we because uh, to me, children or childhood is, is an identity. It's it's a psychic identity, so that can exist Actually, anywhere. Actually, uh, sorry, I'm butting in here, Anujit. What yeah, I thought ahead. was that just like uh, Anjana, I think tries to create an awareness from an early age. Perhaps hmm. you were trying to do that, because it's not a very simple story. It operates hmm. at on many levels. Hmm. Uh, yeah, can I butt in? Because I yeah. find things yeah. from Ridley Scott. And yeah. Spielberg and all these other influences pop in. Yeah, and I suspect that Ananji is grinning when I suspect I've got it right. So all those things, artificial intelligence, he's putting together a chess board of things which have to be mm -hmm. plotted out. And actually, that is the crux of it. And I don't think Lucy's age is really important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it's because got a lot of things. 10. She's actually ten, but you don't realize it until you get to the end of it. Yeah. Even yeah. in Lucy and the Train, it wasn't really Lucy's age that was the point, but the yeah. experiences she went through. And uh, for me, I have to say, I thought that it made it easier for her to imbibe, as children do when they are children, imbibe important messages. And understand how vital our actions are for our future. But uh, I'll go back to Anandajit. You know there are many levels on which your book operates, but the connecting feature is the message of impending doom unless we take drastic action and immediate corrective measures. Could you outline some of these? You have very clear thoughts. About what yeah. we can do to make Earth a better, the world a better place, and I think it would be worth talking about that. Yeah, I think uh, they are the they are the scientific mind of mine. Uh, I mean, uh, primarily, if you ask me, there are many core identities within me, which I think Shushoto was yeah. also referring. Uh, I started my journey as an engineer. I left engineering. I got through joint entrance, but I realized I will be a bad engineer. Then mm -hmm. I started mathematics, political science. Uh, then I st studied literature. I still study literature. I study more vernacular literature. So mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, then I realized that science, uh, the science of mm -hmm. Earth. And then I got into the science because physics was always my favorite subject. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, then I started. Uh, then I started uh, studying um, astrophysics on my own way back from class nine, when I used mm -hmm. to have a huge library when people. Not even had heard of. I'm talking of the late 80s and 1991 when I had read almost all of Stephen Hawking's by 92, 93. I mean, I'm okay. uh, and uh, uh, this is this this was my journey. So I mm. never wanted to be actually a, a, an economist or a policy analyst or anything. My primary yeah. identity, I think, as a child was I will only look onto stars and I will tell my mother. I just want to uh, fly the space, and that was that has always haunted me. I mean, uh, I, I always uh, felt that okay, someone is calling me out in that outer space. I mean, in Interstellar, uh, Murphy finally says that we are born to leave the Earth, uh, yeah. but the, uh, uh, but uh, but it used to haunt me, and then I used to think, okay, what is the science of this Earth? I need to know. I need to be more closer to this Earth and the nature. And then I came to know the science behind that. And as you know, yeah. the IPCC latest report says that uh, yeah. if we don't stop the global warming by not less than 1.5 degree, which is actually yeah. the uh, number is now 1.2 degree, yeah. 
there are yeah. catastrophic uh, impacts and we have already started seeing i mean um, david uh, david attenborough in the netflix there is a series where there is mm. a series of 22 22 episodes where he is highlighting what we need to do so the, he outlines yeah. 10 measures very clearly yeah. he clearly says that if we have to reverse this trend we immediately need to change the lifestyle of of us there is no other way and uh, uh, my yeah. go ahead go ahead go ahead oh indira no, no, no. go ahead i i just go, go had a thought that you know at a time lucy is looking up at the sky this is when faith has gone the person yeah. faith and yeah. that's yeah. a little mm-hmm. similar to what you were saying just now yeah uh, and uh, yeah. so lucy as I, as i am t- uh, telling you lucy is my counter ego lucy has been my uh, lucy has been my nemesis lucy has been my i mean i can name lucy in different different ways faith also is actually faith within me i mean i can co- yeah. quote you the the famous debate between descartian thinking and pascal where pascal is saying yeah. there is a reason in the heart and heart in the reason whereas descartian yeah. uh, descartian thinking is saying is uh, or talking all about certainty where pascal in uh, after 1629 till 1684 people used to think that pascal was a great follower of descartian thinking but no yeah. pascal also said that how practically you need to give uncertainty that space so i yeah. think as a child i was always uh, very certain about the uncertainty of the science of the earth and that enamored me i still get very uh, i get uh, bewildered by this this fact that this unknown uh, systemic and unsystemic connections between human beings with whatever happens uh, within earth and that haunts and, me the spirits and, and yeah, beyond perhaps different galaxies and beyond perhaps. different yeah Yeah. so the uh, so the lucy 3 is where you will see a lot of magic realism also i have brought in in lucy 3 the lot yeah. of this unknown beyond which i could so i have to i this is something i learned from anjuna the and i pay i, I yeah. am gra- deeply grateful to anjuna the anjuna in, in the first uh, book launch of lucy and the train had told me you need to unravel the story slowly dheere dheere uh, just one layer at a time so uh, fact, so i uh, think uh, anjuna had a question for you about your yeah. next uh, 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 that purpose. is what he's talking about the parabola so what is yeah. the parabola <laughs> tell us in a little unraveling what it is yeah Without so as you know uh, a spoiler alert yeah Uh, so so as you know parabola a uh, parabola if you have drawn the diagram one end of the parabola is open ended and one end is we all know we as in geometry classes we used to do so to me science fiction is like a parabola so there are multiple uncertain possibilities and one side is bounded so this parabola is a kind of a rising empire or the magic magical realism which is unexplained beyond what we have seen uh, till lucy meets artificial intelligence mm-hmm. and as anjuna the rightly mentioned that when you get to the lucy 3 you will actually mm-hmm. feel that lucy is completely unbounded by any age when you think of lucy as a parabola lucy's lucy's mind is actually like that parabola and yeah. uh, so there is a there is a boundary factor and there is an uh, complete open ended factor in a plot sense i will not op- uh, uh, unravel that uh, twist there yeah, is something yeah. dark so there is something have dark to and magical the plot yeah yeah <laughs> there is something uh, dark and something magically real uh, which comes in lucy 3 as a parabola okay um uh, anjana i want to ask you your views on this what do you think we need to do to make the world more safe a better place more inclusive not just for humans but for animals for everyone i basically think we have to realize that we are not the only people on the planet there is water there is earth there is air there is everybody and unless we each of us do our little bit to take care of it we are not going to get very far mm. this pandemic for example i was kind of hoping that it would slow down climate change somewhere or the other but mm. it does seem to look like it i thought it was actually a nature plot okay lock these people up and just make sure the world improves so that tigers and everybody well, did, else for a while you for could a while but then everybody the came out charging and the petrol prices have gone up and i don't see where the hell we're going unless everybody gets locked up again yeah in which case we can hope but you see people are not doing what they want to do people are greedy 
we are not doing electric cars we are not cutting down on carbon emissions all these things and and then the big corporates and the governments are not moving okay they have to move fast yeah they are not moving fast enough and possibly everybody is arguing about no what are we going to lose if we do this no we can't cut down emissions by so much hmm Mm. the point is that unless people work it out quickly we may not have a chance but yeah. that said climate change has happened in other times for example the vikings discovered america because they got thrown off course by a climate change phenomenon yeah. in yeah. when was it the 13th century so it's yeah. not that it hadn't happened but there were not such bad emissions or other things then Mm. however yes it is part of the earth now whether the earth wants to get rid of human beings and sort itself out i don't know mm. but if human beings work to help sort out the earth put up all the trees they've cut down and let animals do what they're doing we might be better off without sure. uh, and uh, without getting into artificial intelligence and all those other things yeah. which yeah. are things we are trying to get into Yeah. And uh, I think I'm, maybe Anandajit's aim in talking about that comes through fairly clearly that unless mm-hmm. we're careful yeah. there is going to be a more intelligent a more uh, concerned being somewhere on the planet taking over but uh, well, I also want to ask Anandajit something you've talked about many writers in your introduction to the book you yeah. talked about Premendra Mitra and Shotajit Rai and Shuni Gangopadhyay, Isaac Asimov, uh, Arthur C. Clarke. Who has influenced you the most, or who have you wanted to emulate? Uh, well, uh, Oindriya Ji, if you uh, frankly ask me, uh, my journey has not been a journey of emulation. Why I wrote uh, those uh, people was because, specifically, because my writing is generally not a tributal or a tribution kind of a writing. it's very uh, impulsive writing so many mm. times uh, it is also not good but i can't i sing i compose i write it's always very yeah. spontaneous otherwise i don't do it so okay. uh, so why i uh, mentioned those names was uh, when i was growing up uh, my entire exposure uh, started with bengali science fiction literature i mean i, I uh, how many people uh, actually uh, cite begum rukayas uh, sultana's dream in 1907 yeah, yeah, the yeah. writer from bangladesh i mean uh, on well, ecofem on ecofem she bangladesh uh, on, ha so, ha matlab uh, in <laughs> bangladesh na bangladesh na i mean tokhon india hmm. bangali mohila so but yeah. the point what i'm trying to say is that eco feminism we talk about joanna rose we forget uh, begum rukia yeah. so yeah. The, what uh, what uh, what troubles me is that uh, because mm. even th- and then i did some bit of hindi and entire regional vernacular uh, literature based searching ki india mm. I- india ashami uh, dinesh chandra goshami wo ekjon likhten tar tar dutro series ache tv serial hoychilo science fiction journey report yeah. so why i wrote those names also to bring down this entire politics that okay if there's an asimov then there there was also there was also someone who was writing uh, loho purush or khatarnak in the up mm. belt so mm. that is the subtle hint i'm trying to give that the writing is in a uh, quantum space of a chaotic journey between asimov se leke from asimov to this se begum rukia In and fact, in that Clark, space very different clark and asimo absolutely absolutely yeah. so uh, yeah. uh, so we don't need to we don't need to follow one genre or style of writing we read all these spaces then you say what you want to say and that can be that can be your own way so i have not exactly emulated uh, but it is actually my humble uh, humble uh, or humility that i am no one i mean before me there's so many people who have traversed this journey who have yeah. gone beyond the science beyond the faith and have got lost so i'm just mm. that traveler in that same space so it's from more from uh, that uh, orientation i uh, gave the names not exactly that i have to follow anyone 
Uh, Ananjit, something that has really, uh, I found very intriguing. You've written this book with Debashish Chakraborty. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you plan to go on uh, yeah. with this. He, he's, he, he, if he would not have been there, I could not have written. I mean, he, okay. he has been a uh, huge support. So this is really about the process of writing. How do you work yeah. this out? I mean, do you sit together and write? Do you write different portions, compare notes, put it together? What is your process okay. of creativity? Yeah, right. Okay, so I will tell you the process. The, on that part, yeah, I'm uh, very regimental, both of us. So what what uh, what I do is generally I take at least six to eight months to develop the plot line. Nothing, mm. just the plot line and the imagination. Mm. So so I will create a draft structure outline with pointers and visuals. So for, I before I start writing, I draw. So I will draw the entire book uh, with my sketches. And I send that to uh, Devashisda. Uh, Devashisda has been my uh, senior and mentor from JNU days, from the JNU hostel days. So, so he knows me. So the sketches we see are done by you? No. So, so in the book, uh, the sketches that you see are not by me. They are drawn in Coral Draw. But all the blueprint of those sketches I give to publisher, yeah. okay. so I I don't I don't allow the visualization uh, journey first to come from the designer or the graphical imprinter. The mm. visualization comes from my own diary sketches, in pencil or pen. So what I do is that I draw the plot in sketches, and then I below the sketch lines I put pointers and the visualization of character. Okay, the layers, the sub layers of every plot. I send that to uh, Devashisda. Devashisda criticizes. He comes back with his points. Then yeah, first, yeah. through the, so this journey happens say for six to seven to eight months. This is this is for all the Lucy series I'm talking. This is the journey. Yeah. So yeah. then we synth then we synthesize. Then we uh, do an editing. We we do okay. How much we should say on this? How much we should leave for the audience mm -hmm. to interpret? How much uh, we should open it up? And we do a lot of uh, a lot of. Uh, a lot of editing on that. Then after, say, almost six to eight months, at least a plot line develops. So okay. once we agree on a plot line uh, together with our ideation vision being together, mm -hmm. then uh, uh, then uh, generally what Devashisda tells me that you go ahead and put out your raw passion. So I, rat, I, start, I start writing spontaneously. He doesn't stop me. He said that you do. So I okay. put whatever comes. So say I don't stop. And many times there are writer's block. So when I have a writer's block, those days I don't do anything. I'm just restless. So I'm yeah. walking or or I'm painting or I'm uh, doing music. But the idea is coming. That's a way of uh, holding the idea more and more and more. And then uh, it bursts out. So say on a, at a stretch for six, seven days, I will write. So they, uh, then two, three very raw drafts I will send to him. Then... He will, on those uh, raw drafts, he will constantly in track changes work. He will also mm -hmm. work on the same draft with his mm -hmm. uh, narration style. And then we will do back and forth on the uh, two, okay. three chapters. Unless and until on uh, minus one draft, we are 50% agreeing. So okay. this way the process goes. And then we move okay. towards the end. Okay, I wanted that's to that's ask one, uh, uh, Anjana something. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there are illustrations in the book. Yeah. And uh, have what do you think of them? Do they add to the book? Do they make it more interesting? I found them a good defining point for the chapters they were in. Yes, I agree with you. Because don't forget that a children's book, and especially one with a complexity of subject like this one, does yeah. need a break. So yeah. the visuals add to it, which is good. And, which I think was the point. Yeah, and they, okay. yeah, that's the point. And they divide the chapters and the session, sections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I think you've also had illustrations in uh, one of yeah, your... Yeah, but don't... Yeah. No, no, all mine have illustrations. But then don't all, forget, mine yeah. is a different kind of book. It's a yeah, yeah. ghost story. It's a tiger yeah. story. It's children. Uh, it's many things. So those I think just the first add. One didn't have illustrations. The no, one no, no, that no, I no, they all did. They all did. They I all agree. Did. Okay. 
Uh, no, okay. ivory is not no. a children's book. You mean Chinku? No, not Chinku a children's book. That's yeah. what I mean. Mm. Okay. Anandajit, uh, you know, I want to ask you two que quick questions. We, we, we'll we have to clo close this session in five minutes. You also, you know, in this book, and I want to ask Anjana also, there is the element of a thriller, certainly, because things happen. There's espionage, <coughs> there's uh, uh, unexpected, yeah, there's murder, there are unexpected developments which are certainly of the thrilling kind. So is that also something that you like? Was it uh, something that you deliberately wanted to introduce into this book? Right. No, you, Indriladi uh, uh, and Anjunadi, both of you are right. So, what after all this, finally, I, I always feel that uh, the book has to be simple, it has to entertain, it has to be simple, and it has to have a plot, specter, uh, fiction, melodrama, music. Because I also uh, think many times musically, just like a rhythm, just like a composition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. I, I uh, what, uh, and that's an exercise. So when Devashis and I constantly discuss, I bring in music. Okay, if mm. say if I would have seen this book, this part as a music, what is the mm. musical uh, counterpart of this uh, uh, visualization in a reader's mind? Once mm. she or he is reading this musically, is she or he able to connect? And that's where I bring in this plot thriller, because finally it's about emotions. Uh, how how the emotional uh, narrative is uh, going up and down within the reader. So uh, that's a deliberate attempt. That's a deliberate attempt without uh, without uh, uh, dominating the simplicity or the undertone of the undertone of the book, because too much okay. of dominance of that. Uh, Anjunadi wants to say something. Anjunadi yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm uh, saying that it goes with the sci-fi trend, because if you realize again, I mentioned Blade Runner before. That is a thriller. And it's yeah. a thriller about uh, the artificial people being hunted down and saving them and this androids and everything else. Yes. So it kind of adds something to the sci-fi world that you are, he is creating. A and in of urgency. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, last question, Anandojit. Uh, are you a chess fanatic? Why was that so important? Or was it meant to be a kind of, you know, a parallel that you draw between life and its moves and the game? Uh, how important is chess to you? Uh, but it, it and is that's actually all I'm all. saying here. I'm not talking about the rest because I don't want to give it away. Yeah, no, it is It is actually about all, uh, because uh, chess, uh, I always used to love the game of chess, though my, I was always into cricket and uh, football. I mean, I yeah. still play, uh, play uh, every Saturday or Sunday after the COVID is over, I, I'm again back to my sports. Uh, yeah. But chess, chess to me as a game, I think uh, I have learned a lot from that game. I think if we have to understand faith, logic strategic reason uh, if you connect epics you can connect it to chess and there's a subtle subtle layer in the book also where i'm actually connecting epics with chess if you uh, yes. and i'm sure yeah, all all, all of you have realized that so where yeah. i'm actually bringing mysticism religion uh, uh, very subtly in the book where i'm mm. leaving it open and dead and i'm connecting the uh, strategic moves of chess with the larger mysticism and the philosophy of life both both Eastern philosophical thinking and Eastern uh, philosophical thinking. Uh, okay. So the politics politics was that. Okay. Uh, last question, and this is to both Anjuna and you, whoever wants to talk about this. In your book, there are parts where uh, willy-nilly, some people are part of an experiment or they are part of uh, doing something for the betterment of the world. Uh, which they may not have chosen to do otherwise. Do you think the end justifies the means in this case? Mm. Both of you. Anjanadi, you go Is ahead. Then a question I will. of ethics or See, in this, yeah. in this case, it is, in a sense, the end justifies the means. 
because there is the example of faith actually and mm. what faith does she goes against something she did not start out to do because yeah. of loyalty now more than that i can't say because that again will give away things a bit yeah. but yeah. there is the character of faith and faith is not even human yeah so the issue is that there are beings uh, who who feel that they have they are accountable and on top of that there is that little accountability uh, going back in time number which he does where you yeah. look at different examples and you derive different types of accountability from that through acronyms mm. uh so i i i think that it seems to be that the end does justify the means justify. if the end is a good end if it is bad it it does not yeah Anand ji would you agree with that and this is we are going to have to end up to this well uh, i if i can i be honest in the answer can i yeah, i sure. when we, when, when uh, we had conceptualized it or when we had written to it i i actually uh, this was a debate that debashish and i had and we we thought the end not to be an end though it should satisfy the means the way okay. it should be that um, and that's where uh, lucy 3 comes so when okay. we were writing actually lucy 3 was very much born in my mind so i had already created a plot line uh, so but we yes, will wait uh, for that we will uh, wait because lucy in this one the end is a return to the beginning actually right, right. like okay. in and my end I'm, is my beginning right. and then it moves on and and uh, lucy Lucy three will have those multiple play with time, time in and time, time out. Okay. Okay. So we look forward to that, forward and I think that's it. a good note to end on and hand it over to Mona. Thanks so much, Anjana. Thanks so much, Anandji. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Angela. Thank you, Anjana. Thank you so Mona. much. Enjoyed the wonderful and engaging discussion, Angela. As always, you are such a phenomenal moderator. Anand ji, it was fabulous to know about your book. Anjana ji, wonderful to hear about Anand ji's book as well as your work, which is extensive. I wish all of you all the best on behalf of Readers and Writers Club. Have a very very enjoyable and a good evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so, so much, much Mona. Thank you. Thank you. And thank, thank you to thank all you those so who tuned in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yep. you so Bye. much. Thank you to everyone. Thank you. Bye.